Sunday marks the official inauguration of the world's largest solar power plant in operation, the $600 million, 100 megawatt Shemps One, sure to be a significant part of Abu Dhabi's ever-expanding energy mix. Well, last week also saw the announcement of new housing complexes being built in the Northern Emirates that will harness the power of the sun to reduce their carbon footprint by up to 30 percent. Well, joining us now to take us through all things solar is Vahid Fatuhi, the president of the Emirates Solar Industry Association. Bahid, welcome to the show. Welcome Thank back. you for having me back. Appreciate Thank you very much for being with us. So just to start things off, looking at the state of solar now, obviously Shemps One opening beginning of next week. We have seen these announcements of new housing projects incorporating solar into the design. Where does solar stand right now in the UAE? Well, it's a very exciting time for solar in the UAE. As you said, uh, one of our founding members, Mazdar, is going to introduce this uh, world-class solar system uh, in Abu Dhabi. And that project is only the tip of the iceberg. The, the Emirate of Abu Dhabi has committed to a plan of introducing 1,500 megawatts of solar capacity in just the next seven years. So projects of this scale you will see being inaugurated almost on an annual basis, which for us in the UAE as the Emirate Solar Association is very exciting. Absolutely. Some massive projects, some huge figures, both in Abu Dhabi, Dubai as well. And recently, Ahi, we've seen the fact that you can now get solar power in your house. Of course, I guess there's a huge commercial side, but it's really refreshing now to see that it actually can make a difference to a lot of indiv individual consumers as well. It's, uh, it's still in uh, final stages. We're not quite there yet. What do we know so far? Well, once again, the UAE is leading the region in introducing innovative solar solutions. Uh, Shams One is a perfect example of that on a utility scale. And on a residential scale, uh, we see the, the leaders of Dubai uh, putting in place regulations that in, in the next months, inshallah, we'll see uh, consumers and home homeowners like you and I be able to install solar systems on our roof and create clean electricity for the first time. What are you expecting uh, some of the major incentives are? I mean, for, for people here, solar technology, on an individual level at least, is still relatively new. What's to get people to really go up and, and go out and sign up? Well, the, these, this program will have incentives. And we have to remember, for example, these uh, solar systems that are on our roof are continuously running whenever the sun is shining. So when you're in the office during the day and you're not using electricity and the solar system is soaking up the sun, creating clean energy and feeding into the grid, well, very likely, and as we have seen in other markets, the utility will uh, compensate you for that clean energy that you produce and that you feed into the grid. I wanted to ask a little bit about a cost as well. I mean, it's, um, I know with, with the announcement of Shemps One, I think they were saying that the, the relative cost of electricity from solar is uh, about that of diesel at the moment. And we are seeing, of course, rising fossil fuel costs, rising petrochemical costs for power, uh, and low, uh, falling costs when it comes to renewables. When do you think we'll see uh, a competitive rate between the two? It's already there. It's already there. Since the project Shams One was uh, announced to today, the price of solar PV systems has dropped by almost 80%. So that's unprecedented. No other commodity or product has witnessed such a sharp drop in price in just the last five years. And what this means is that now it's a lot more commercially attractive. Whether you're building large projects or small systems, uh, it's a lot more attractive compared to conventional uh, fuels like oil and gas. So once you, have this, once you have it up and running, it's obviously very cost effective. What about the cost of installing that? Is that something that we're going to see paid back very quickly? Energy is still highly subsidized in this country. I guess in other parts of the world, you'd see that payback quite quickly. Here, it potentially could take a little bit longer. It could, it could. But I think with the incentives in place, um, my suspicion, my, my hunch is that um, the payback period will be anywhere from seven to ten years. Mm -hmm. And when you think that, when you, when you realize that these solar systems and these solar panels have a life of 25 years, you realize that, you know, it, once you've recouped your investment, you then have up to 15 years of clean, free electricity. I mean, uh, for a lot of expats, uh, you know, obviously they may not be here that long. I myself, I've been here four years as well. It certainly seems like a great idea, but to have to be here for 10 years to really make it pay off, do you think it will take off with the majority of the population? Absolutely. You say you've been here four years. I guarantee you, Katie, that in the next four years, your home will have a solar system on the roof. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, <laughs> well, we'll have to hold you to that. Uh, uh, looking at something else, I think that's been particularly here to the region. We're looking at solar energy. There have been some concerns over dust uh, on the panels and how it does cut efficiency. Is that something that, that concerns you? Are there technological strides being made uh, in, in this uh, avenue? 
Yeah. Well, let's look back to the um, to the uh, to the automobile. When the uh, when the automobile was first introduced with the windshield, people found that when they're driving and there's sand and dust and and the mud that sits on the windshield, it, it prohibits their ability to see. So what they came up with was a little device with a small engine and automation with a little squeegee and a bit of water that solved the problem. And there's nothing stopping us to do the same thing through automation, uh, small engines to overcome this problem. And from what we're seeing, some of our members are coming up with uh, automated uh, small solar powered devices that will um, generate, clear, that will generate uh, power during the day and clean the panels at night, all using solar. So innovations will be adopted that will overcome these issues and make uh, solar uh, a viable solution, much like the windshield wipers overcame the <laughs> issues for cars. What are the other issues that still need to be addressed here before you expect to see a project like this really rolled out and embraced across the whole country? <laughs> at, the, at the very beginning, what you need is regulation and policies. Uh, in order to attract investments, in order to attract consumers who uh, build solar system on the roofs, you need a stable, long-term policy framework. And we've seen uh, the uh, Abu Dhabi introduced to some extent those policies. Dubai is moving that direction. But for it to really take off, uh, that will need a, a very stable foundation, uh, which we're happy to see is starting to take root. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's enough of a place for solar in the uh, UAE's energy mix at the moment? Uh, I mean, I guess considering the, the cost dropping, the way it is becoming more efficient, just, just very quickly. Yes, absolutely. In fact, we've seen Abu Dhabi saying that 7% of the energy mix will come from solar. We've seen Dubai announce that 5% will be generated from solar. And this is using today's technology. Imagine tomorrow with new innovations, new breakthroughs. We're very confident that a uh, you know, double digit percentage of our energy mix will come from solar. Oh, double digit, when, when? When? Well, you know, I am not, <laughs> I'm not a genie. It would be <laughs> hard to tell, but we're in the right, going the right direction. And I'm very confident that uh, the solar industry and the solar community in the will only grow. All right. Well, Sunny side up. Uh, thank, you, nice, thank you for nice joining us this evening. Appreciate your time.